Hello and happy Sunday. <clears throat> this is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, March the 5th. And I sound like a prepubescent, bo prepubescent boy because the um, Bradford pears are in full bloom. Yes, I have been taking my Zyrtec and yes, I have already started um, taking my Nasonex. But you still get this today. Yeah, there's nothing. There's just nothing you can do to get ahead of it. But anyway, hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Let me see if I can get caught up with you all here. Um, happy, happy Sunday. It is March. You know, I warned you all last week that we only had just a couple of days of, um, we had only, oh, here we go, that we had only had a couple of days of February left. So if you had anything you needed to do in February, you better get on the stick. Hello, Elaine, because we only had just a couple of days of February left. It is March. It has come. And I will tell you here in East Tennessee, hello, Anna, it came in like, it came roaring in like a lion. Um, so, you know, they talk about um, March coming in roaring, roaring like a lion. It was definitely like a lion. Um, it was it was a lot. And hello, Hattie. It's good to see you. Um, we had uh, uh, just whiz-bang storms on Friday. Hello, Sandra from Demons Ferry. And I know a few of you all had those storms, too. So I hope everybody is safe and well. Hello, Carol Lou. Um, if you are just joining us again, and hello, Jonah. Jonah. I always say that wrong. Hello, Jonna. Good to see you. Um, again, if you're just joining us, hello, Mary from Pittsburgh. Um, sorry for the prepubescent boy voice again today. Um, hello, Barbara. It is Bradford pear season here, and I don't know if it was the storms that came through. Hello, Marianne from Pennsylvania that kind of kicked it into, um, into high gear. Hello, Caroline. And Caroline, I've got the voice thing going on because, again, it's Bradford pear season. So Bradford pears are blooming here. And uh, let's see what else. Um, Oh, what are the yellow flowers anyway? Um, yeah, I know, Mary. Nothing is cutting through that. Yeah, it's just it's just allergies. Hello, Sandra from Naperville, Illinois. And yes, I have already started my Zyrtec and my Nasonex. So I think that's the only reason that I can even talk. I think that's it. Yeah, so I've done, and thank you, Mary, for the advice, but I've done hot tea. I've gargled salt water. Um, I've done all the things that I normally do um, when things start blooming. I've sort of taken my allergy medicine a little bit early. But oh well, here we are. So sorry, 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 everyone um, out there in Facebook land. And if you are watching this later on YouTube, it's just YouTube.com. Search if you have an egg. Hello, Trish. <clears throat> so if you are watching this later, sorry, you're just going to have to deal with this. Hello, Orlando Debbie. And yeah, I know it's it's that time of year. It's that time of year. And hello, Sherry. Um, the nice thing is the Dogwood Arts Festival always warns us when this is going to happen. Hello, Sherry, because when it's time for the Dogwood Arts Festival to start, it's time for all of this to start. Um, and I thought I had, um, I thought I had gotten ahead of it. Hello, Lynn. Started taking the Zyrtec um, several days ago before everything was in full bloom. Hello, Lisa. And started the Nasonex then. So I think that's the only reason that I can talk. Okay, but anyway, today is um, Sunday. It is March the 5th. Again, I apologize for the voice, um, but hello and happy Sunday, everybody. I'm Kelly with if you have an egg.com. And um, I promise I don't always sound like this, and I promise I am not sick. It's literally just the it's it's literally just the pollen. Um, and if you live in East Tennessee, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We have outside in the parking lot for our loft, we have a bright yellow Mustang. It's not ours. Um, one of our neighbors has a bright yellow Mustang, and there is so much pollen. And the storms on Friday washed so much, washed so much of the pollen down that the Mustang has greenish yellow pollen all around it. Hello, Kim. Greenish yellow pollen all around the Mustang. And it's funny, it's hilarious because it looks like the paint is washing off. And hello, Kim, it's good to see you. The, I think I just said that. Anyway, um, but it's funny because the car, the pollen is almost exactly the same color as the par car. And it looks like it's washing it away. Anyway, it's just pretty funny. Okay, today is March the 5th. This is chat number 309, and I hope that you will stick with me um, through this um, through this voice. And hello, Sandy. Oh, Sandy's in bed. I'm sorry, suffering from a sinus infection, and it's not even spring yet. It is spring here. Yeah, so it is spring in East Tennessee. And actually, I think we're known for I think we're known for being like one of the top three or something, you know, states with the most pollen. Um, yeah. Anyway, so. Yay us! Great, you know, great, great, great news. Okay, a couple of bits of bits of business um, before we get started. This is chat number three hundred and nine. <clears throat> three hundred and nine, and it is titled "What Happens to My Body When I Lose Weight." And if I was about a 13, 12, 13 year old boy, 
I imagine this is what they go through. But anyway, a little bit of news for March because, again, it is March suddenly already. And last week, I let you all know that there were only a couple of days left of February because it is not a leap year. Yeah, so we have blown through February and sailing into March. Um, but in case you have not seen it on your WW app um, or in Connect, um, it's on, it's just like all over both of those places. Hello, Marlene from Florida. It's all over both of those places. Um, there's a barista named Alex. And if it's a guy, do you still call it a barista? Or is it a baristo? I'm just asking. Okay. A barista named Alex has taken over the low-carb macro and, yes, Weight Watchers world with fun, low-calorie um, coffee creations. You can check out Alex's WW um, Coffee Hacks on your, in your app. So if you just go ahead and log on to your um, WW app, it's going to be there front and center. So I found them pretty quickly. Like, it had its own grouping, and it was called um, the Macro, let's see, the Macro Baristas uh, coffee hacks. So the mas Macro Baristas WW Coffee Hacks. It was really easy to find. Or if you go over on Connect, a bunch of people are talking about it. Um, so you can check out Alex's creations again on um, on your app. And um, oh no, Kim says her car is full of pollen. She washed it again last week and it's full again. Yeah, that's exactly how we are. Hello, Sylvia. And oh, and I sound like Sylvia's daughter tonight. Yeah, great. Um, and yep, um, Debbie is um, exactly right. He also has an Instagram page, and his Instagram page is at it's the at sign. Hello, Tag from Buffalo, New York. Um, it's the at sign the macro barista. That's spelled T H E. So the macro M A C R O barista B A R I S T A. So the macro barista. And anyway, you can find some yummy, yummy creations. I caught myself be right before the chat watching one of his videos. He was showing how to get, um, how to place an order at Starbucks um, and got something that was super skinny. And then he was going to take it home and put it over or mix it with some ice cream, with some low carb, um, low point ice cream. Yeah, I'm all about this guy. Anyway, that's a little bit of news. You can find it all over WW. Um, you can find it on your app. You can find it on Connect. And you can find it on his Instagram page. Again, that's at the Macro Barista. Okay, then, hello, Sherry. Uh, also, Eat This, Not That has updated their um, food shortage list. So they had a list, they had a, like a food fund, like a what's going to be short in 2023? Like, what are we going to run out of in 2023? Um, and it was a pretty extensive list, and they had published that at the beginning of January. They have, they've, re, they've updated it. So they've updated that list every food that was mentioned on that list and that is eat this not that and it's just eat this not that dot com and when jessica um, publishes these notes here in a couple of days she will tag the macro barista so she'll put a link in there for the macro barista so you can go straight to his instagram page if you want to and then she will also have a link for the eat this not that article and it's the same people that wrote the book eat this not that i know y'all remember that if you're as old as me you remember that book um, but they've updated their food shortage list, and you can go to their website to check out the whole thing. And again, we will publish the link to that um, when this is when this is um, posted here in a day or two on if you have an egg.com. Um, but every food that they had mentioned in early January remains on the list, so they are all. Thank you, Debbie, for sharing that um, about the macro barista. So um, all of those foods are still on that list, but it looks like eggs, corn, and lettuce look like they will be making a comeback uh, a rebound sooner than later um, and you can again you can visit eat this not that dot com and their website for the complete list but I have to know because they've kind of they've kind of downgraded the situation with um, eggs not completely downgraded it but just just taking it down a notch um, and um, lettuce and corn so um, apparently there were you know some major weather disasters with corn um, but that's starting to make a comeback um, and um, also lettuce and I know um, a, 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 an Instagram page that I follow and I actually follow her advice for planting my own garden it's called Gardenary um, she has been wearing it out thank you again Debbie for sharing that she uh, that link to eat this not that she has been wearing out um, how to grow your own lettuce um, you know, like garden, even if it's going to be a container garden. I know Debbie does hydroponics. Um, she's got a, she has an indoor lettuce garden, for lack of a better term, that she grows hydroponically. But apparently some areas of the country, lettuce has become super, super hard to get and super expensive. So are you all seeing that in your area? I mean, we've had some, we've had some ins and outs here in Knoxville, Tennessee, um, but I don't think we've had 
that much of a shortage. Um, still though, her container gardens are super cute um, and would be fun to grow at the new showroom, so I think I might try that. But eggs here, I did notice today that the grocery store shelves are getting full again of eggs. Um, so it's not, um, it's not quite as bad yet. Um, oh, Caroline wants to know, wants to sidetrack and asked if I ate all of the chocolate yet. Caroline, um, Lynn was exactly right. This, that chocolate, and we're not, sorry, we're sick, we're, we're wandering off in a different direction. Um, but Caroline's in a different time zone. So she's like ahead of us anyway. So in her thought processes, she's already a few hours ahead of us. So she's already moved on to the next subject. Um, but it is so it's delicious but it is so rich you can i can literally only eat just a couple of pieces of it like one or two pieces of it and that's it because it is so it's just so rich um anyway yeah so no i have not eaten it all yet because it is so rich but eggs in our area um are becoming plentiful again um i hope they are in your area i did notice that they are still anywhere from like i'm gonna say a dollar to 250 more um per dozen than they were you know even just a year and a half ago maybe so a little bit still a little bit more expensive um, but it's nothing crazy like it was just a few months ago so anyway hopefully those things are making a um, uh, making a comeback uh oh okay hold on Carol Lou says she's not far from the train derailment in Ohio and heard that the farmers markets will be bad this year because of soil contamination that's not good yeah that's a whole different reason um, to be short on food and that is that is not good and that is not that is not fun so I am so sorry for that that's not gonna be good news okay so enough about the news enough about me squawking like a teenage boy um, but who sat their bottom give me some thumbs ups if you put your bottom in a chair last week if you sat in a um, in-person workshop give me some thumbs ups um, if you went to a zoom workshop last week still some thumbs ups or if you were here with us live last week, hello Vicki, if you were here with us live last week, give me some hearts, or if you watch later on demand, also hearts. Um, and Debbie says hydroponics is so easy, but it's because you live near Disney, and Disney is like the king of hydroponics, so of course it's easy for you, I'm just kidding. Okay, bravo stickers to everybody who went to an in-person workshop this week, or did a virtual workshop, or was with us here live last week, or watched later on demand. Um, so bravo, 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 everybody, wait in bring in March and um, that is fantastic I'm seeing lots of hearts lots of thumbs ups and lots of people are sharing Sandra Elaine uh, Mary yeah lots of y'all Marianne okay so last week was chat number 308 and it was titled how to build healthy habits that stick and I asked you to raise your hand um, if you spent most of your life trying to figure out how to um, I know Debbie it has nothing to do with Disney I know proximity doesn't doesn't do anything um, but I asked you to raise your hand if you spend most of your life trying to quit bad habits instead of trying to create good habits that you could stick with. Yeah, me too. Guilty of that too. Um, I actually practiced on that a little bit this week um, and tried some new habits. Um, it was hard. Um, I picked I picked one thing at work, and the one thing at work was to was a habit to complete to complete a folder before I could move to the next folder. So anyway, I'm not going to bore you all with the details, but I made myself a little list of what had to be done to each one of them before we could move on. And um, yeah, so now I have a stack of folders on my desk about this tall that need to be done, but at least the ones that are off of my desk are finished. So they are finished, done, in the spot where they need to be. They're not in, all, they're not all in eight different, you know, forms of um, doneness and, you know, and moved around. Um, but last week when we were talking about that, we talked about the power of positive picking and pick something positive that you could do. So that was what I decided to do was to do something with the folders instead of saying, instead of saying I'm not going to leave them laying around. And then John and I worked on it um, on our vision board on working on, you know, getting some of these, um, some of these things paid off and some of our business expenses paid off. So we made a little list of things that could be easily accomplished and we could check off of our list. And we put it up on a wipe off board at the shop on Friday. And even though we had storms um, impending and approaching, and it ended up just being more of a, more of a, oh my gosh, there's bad weather coming than anything actually happening, which was fantastic. But it was so nice because everybody was, everybody was coming over and looking at the board and then going, you know, we finished that one, mark that one off, check, you know, mark it off, mark it off, mark it off, mark it off. And when we left, we took our maybe 20 item list and we only had like three things left on that list. So we did it, it was positive thinking instead of saying don't do this and don't do that and don't break something and don't not show up and whatever. We listed positive things that worked out fantastically. We also followed the rule of three. 
Um, so we had, you know, doing things in threes makes it much easier, much easier to remember. And um, then we were quick to quantify. And the quick to quantify for us at work was marking it off the, you know, it was like you actually erasing it from the board. So we had an almost clean board by the time we left, which made everybody feel really, really good. Um, and your homework last week was hashtag power picker. So I wanted you to pick what your positive habit was gonna be. And then I wanted you to tell us three ways, again, not two, not seven, just three ways that um, three easy things that you could do um, to just kind of nail that habit, to focus on that habit. So let's see how you did. Um, first, Deanna, seriously, Deanna every week. Every week she seriously knocks her homework out of the park every single week. So number one, she removed or put out of sight um, her, her red light food, so that was her number one. Number two, she stocked up on fresh fruits and veggies. Number three, she wrote the point value on packaging. Yeah, girl, yeah, 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 yeah. That's some, that is some power picking. Um, Lynn is a pro. She's a seasoned pro, you know. I mean, y'all here are talking about this. It's, she's been doing this a long time, um, and her power picks prove it. Number one, she made her grocery order and planned three different snacks. Number two, she put her snacks in her line of sight. So I want you all to stop and understand this for just a second. So she planned the snacks, got, bought the snacks, but she put them in her line of sight. So that means that Lynn didn't, put, she didn't put the snacks up here, the pre-planned snacks, and she didn't put them down here. She put them in her line of sight so she could see them. Do you know how, what your, how much more significant the chances are of you picking the healthy snack, healthy and lower point snack that you planned, if you can see it, if it's right here in your line of sight, than if it's hidden somewhere, like exponentially. And then her number three was she got her fruit washed and ready for the week. So she went ahead, so she went ahead and washed that and got it ready. Okay, um, and then Vicki nailed it again this week. So Vicki's getting really good at doing her homework. Um, number one, she picked herself as a priority. So you would think that that would be an easy power pick. That's hard. It's hard to pick yourself as the priority. Number two, she chose to do her homework. Good job, Vicki. And number three, she prepared for success by having healthy options available. Nailed it. So bravo to everybody who did their homework last week. Good job, everybody. Um, you all are already rocking this new year and we're not quite into the second quarter yet, but you all are nailing it, rocking it, whatever, doing a great job. So this week, <coughs> this week, um, we are talking about what happens to my body when I lose weight. So yeah, that's the topic this week. What happens to my body when I lose weight? And I, when I first started Weight Watchers some 25 plus years ago, I thought the only thing that happened to your body when you lost weight was you weighed less. Duh. I mean, that's literally what I thought. I thought, yeah, when you lose weight, that means you weigh less, okay? So it turns out I was wrong. Um, weighing less, even your body getting smaller, those are not the only things that happen to you when you lose weight, okay? So here's some, um, some brain food for thought on that subject. Uh, the first thing I wanna to talk to you all about is more, there is more than an apple a day that will keep the doctor away. Studies prove that losing somewhere between five to 10% of your body weight, and that's not very much, so five to 10%, and you know, we used to get charms when you had lost 10% of your um, body weight. I wish that we would get those back again for those of you that have in-person workshops. But studies prove that um, losing somewhere between five to 10% of your body weight can improve your mood, makes you in a better mood. It can improve your sleep. Think about it, you're not so laboriously breathing. Um, it can lower your blood pressure or your a and or your A1C. It can lower your cholesterol. It can improve joint pain and it can actually decrease, decrease your risk for heart disease. Um, type two diabetes and hypertension, just losing five to 10% of your body weight. So if you weigh, let's say for example, if you weigh 200 pounds right now, you only have to lose 20 pounds, 10 to 20 pounds, because it's five to 10% of your body weight. So 10 to 20 pounds to start seeing these health boosting results. So, you know, if you weigh 200 pounds right now and your goal is to lose, let's say 50 pounds or 60 pounds, and you think 20 pounds? Why would I just want to lose 20 pounds? Uh, yeah, I want. I would want to lose 20 pounds to see my A1C go down, to see my cholesterol get better, to um, have my joint pain um, lessened, to um, decrease the risk of heart disease. I'm thinking 10% of your body weight, heck yeah. 
that's something that we should all be shooting for. That's a great thing. That's a, that's a great example of what happens to your body um, besides just losing weight when you're losing weight, okay? The second thing is the scale is still not smart. So I talk about this all the time. I tell you all how stupid the scale is, that it's an inanimate object, that it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't know how you're doing. It doesn't know anything about you. It doesn't get to have an opinion. Um, so I harp on that poor scale. Um, and it's a good thing that they are, and that the scales are inanimate objects and they're without a central nervous system because their little feelings might be hurt as much fun as I make of them. Um, but seriously, the scale still doesn't know what your body knows, okay? So your body knows what's going on besides weight loss, besides um, getting just getting smaller. Your body knows, the scale doesn't know. Um, so if your doctor took you down a little bit on your medicine because of your weight loss, the scale doesn't say, hey, good job, good job. The doctor took you off one of your medications or reduced one of your medications or, you know, anything like that. It doesn't say that. It just says, oh, hmm, well, you only lost two tenths of a pound from last week to this week. I don't know. Or you weighed yourself this morning and then weighed yourself again this afternoon. Don't do that, by the way. Um, and you gained a little weight, hmm. you know, that's all the scale knows. It does not know what's actually going on um, with your body. Um, if you want, uh, it's not hard to give it power. It is really not hard to, at all to give the scale power. So that's, that was one of the um, kind of pillars that we talked about at the beginning of the year was weighing on some kind of a regular basis. So Weight Watchers recommends that you weigh between one day you know between once a day and once a week um but no more so no less than once a week but no more than once a day okay and let's see loretta says why is it if i have fun a fun day i could put on five pounds yeah in that one fun day yeah i know exactly because the scale doesn't know what's going on the scale doesn't know that it's one singular day in time and that you didn't really gain five pounds that it's probably salt you know it's some kind of water retention or something else um but weighing regularly was one of those pillars, one of those foundations that we talked about at the first of the year. So it's important that you weigh just so that you have this historical, you know, kind of this historical um, history, historical history. Yeah. So you have this historical record of what is going, you know, is what is, of what is going on that you can look back on and you can see, you know, these kinds of things and some days Loretta it's going to be like this and some days it's going to be like that but so you can see those and you can you know kind of see what that trend line is but again the scale doesn't know so I mean I've got plenty of friends well okay Karen when Karen and I first started walking that would be 20 we think 27 years ago I guess because Casey was like two so when Karen and I first started walking we walked every single morning every single morning every single morning every single morning and we weren't losing any weight. Neither one of us is losing any weight. But the next thing you know, I put on some of my pants, too big. Put on a little bit size smaller, too big. So my body knew that I was losing mass, but the scale did not know that I was losing weight and or agree with that. Okay, so the scale still does not get to give you power. It still does not know what's going on. Okay. Let's see. Oh, wait. Debbie says, because you didn't include the scale in your fun... Oh no, oh, Debbie. Debbie says, because you didn't include the scale in your fun, you came back and stood on the scale's face. Mm-hmm, yeah, that's pretty funny. I'm telling you, it's a good thing they don't have feelings. Okay, and then the last thing is, give me an N. N. Give me an S. S. Give me a V. V. And I better not scream or I'll lose my voice. Um. NSV. How many of y'all know what that stands for? So if you've been doing this any length of time, you know what that stands for. So let me hear you. What does NSV stand for? And I'm going to get a, the scale is evil, Loretta. It's a good, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to get a drink of water real quick. So NSV. Yes, Debbie. So what does NSV stand for? If you've been around for any length of time, you know what this is for. Yes, Lynn says, non-scale victories. That's exactly right. Caroline says, I gained weight this month last year, but even though scales show a gain, her clothes show NSVs. Exactly right. And Carol Lou says, non-scale victory. Mary says, non-scale victory. And a non-scale victory. Kim says, non-scale victories. That's exactly right. Okay. 
So non-scale victories, you've heard of them, yes? Yes, everyone looks like everyone has heard of those. Um, those are victories that the scale can't reward you with, okay? And yes, a non-scale victory, exact, exactly, Debbie. Um, so those are things that the scale can't reward you with. So non-scale victories, the scale, the scale cannot give you credit for them, you know? Um, so NSVs are things that happen to your body when you lose weight, whether the scale agrees or not. So the scale not giving you accolades or cheering or whatever when you've lost weight, it's just the scale being stupid, okay? So things like moving over a notch in your belt. Um, we have a friend in our Sunday school class that is, um, yeah, Carolyn says, great boost. We have a friend in our Sunday school class that has, not only has he moved his belt over, to every available spot on his belt. He has started making um, holes and he's had to start trimming the end off of his belt because it, it is he's moved over so far. That is a non-scale victory. It really doesn't matter how much he weighs. Nobody cares how much he weighs. Him going, look at this, I had to pull it over another notch. That's what matters, okay? Things like that, things like the doctor lowering your medications, that's a victory, okay? Not what the stupid scale said. And getting a hug from a getting a hug from a friend and their arms can go all the way around you and their fingers touching. I mean that that is an NSV. Okay, that is oh yeah. Debbie says being able to do your own pedicures that is awesome. And Loretta, I know that you've got some. I know you've got some. Okay, so those are some fantastic ones. So your homework this week is going to be a little off for me it's gonna be a little it's a little bit of a twister for me okay so your homework this week is hashtag cheerleader c-h-e-e-r-l-e-a-d-e-r -E 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 and I'm saying cheerleader I'm not saying cheerleader even though Casey has already done the um, she's already done the homework badge this week and it is of a cheerleader but your homework this week is hashtag cheerleader and again, it's a little bit of a twister because I want you to be a cheerleader, not a cheerleader, but a cheerleader. And I want you to cheer on either another member here, so either somebody else that's here with us tonight, somebody that's in our, um, if you have an enclosed group, um, or somebody on Connect, or it could even be somebody in your in-person workshop. And I want you to tell us one non-scale victory that you think that they should celebrate. And thank you, Lynn, for posting the hashtag cheerleader. Um, so I don't, what you, I mean, we can brag on ourselves all day, okay? How much more special is it when somebody brags on you? I know I love it when somebody says, oh, wow, those, you know, your pants are falling off or which is happening today, but you know, or, oh, wow, you can see your decollete or, oh, wow, I'm like, you know, you know, such and such, whatever, you know, you can bend over and tie your shoes or whatever. So I want you to pick somebody, um, and don't make it embarrassing for them you know hopefully they'll enjoy it but pick somebody either here you know in this you know in, in our facebook um, on our facebook page um somebody in the facebook group somebody in your in-person workshop somebody that you're a buddy with um somebody on connect and i want you to be a cheer leader a hashtag cheer leader and tell us one non-scale victory that you think they should celebrate i'm going to give you an example of how to do your homework um, we have a we have a lady in our in-person workshop named um, Jody, and Jody has already lost I think it's seventy something pounds. Am I proud of Jody for losing seventy something pounds? Well, of course I am. Absolutely, of course I am so proud of her. But you know what I notice about Jody? I don't think I don't look at her and go, mm, that looks like about sixty eight. That doesn't look like seventy, or that looks like seventy five, not seventy. I don't care how much she's lost. What I see. What I see in Jody is how fast she makes it from the table to the bathroom and back. That sounds weird, but when when I first met Jody, she had so much trouble with her knees and her hips that she she could barely like she hated to walk. She hated it because she struggled so much just to make it from point A to point B. And you know what I see? Man, she's flying. She comes in that door, sets her stuff down. Hello, everybody, and she is and she is off to that bathroom and right back. I mean, she is moving fast. Jody is having no problems moving whatsoever now. So that would be my cheer leader. My, that would be my cheering, you know, for Jody. So that's what I want y'all to do for your homework this week. Um, uh, and yeah, Loretta, I know, but you can lose, you can lose weight at any, at any, 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 any age. 
And um, thank you, Ramona, for that. That's very sweet. But um, it's very sweet. Cheerleader. So I want you all to find somebody, and I want you to be their cheerleader and say, my gosh, I just noticed that you, you know, you have you had to buy smaller clothes? Or look at that. Anyway, the decollete comment, a lot of people love that one because when you start to see your decollete, which are these little bones right here, um, that's usually when people um, see it. Don't just say, oh, look at your skinny face. I mean, notice something like pulling your belt over, moving faster, um, you know, not, um, you know, maybe if it's your spouse, you know, maybe them not snoring so much at night or make it positive though, make it something positive. Okay, so that is your homework is hashtag cheerleader and Sandra, you're exactly right. It is time for some water. Whew, because I've been talking a lot, even with my little creepy teenage boy voice. So everybody, let's stop at the halfway point and drink some water. <clears throat> I think my body's, my voice is actually not doing too bad. Um, for how crackly it was this morning. Okay, if you are just joining us, um, I sound like a teenage boy because the Bradford pears are blooming in East Tennessee. And I'm telling you, they stink. Is there anyone here? Yeah. Yeah, Phyllis says, yay, Jody. Sometimes I have to sock myself just to get out of the chair and walk. That's exactly where Jody was at. That is exactly where she was at. Okay, so. Oh, yes, and the air conditioner finally just shut off. So, does anybody else think that Bradford pears stink? Like, smell bad? Or is it just me? I know Gwen thinks they do, too. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was Gwen that commented on how they smelled. Um, but, yeah, they s smell so bad. Okay, so they smell bad, and then they do this to my voice. And, yes, if you're just joining us, um, I'm Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com. Today is Sunday, March the 5th. And the Bradford pears and a couple other forsythia bushes and things are in full bloom here. So I think the only reason I have a voice is I have already started my um, Zyrtec and my Nasonex. Otherwise, I don't think I would be able to talk at all because this happens every single year. Okay, we are going to make something in the second half of tonight's chat. In the first half of the chat, we were talking about being a cheerleader for somebody. Um, I think noticing someone make a good selection, making, you know, some um, some good choices, you know, that you could cheer them on for that. Um, but don't forget to post it somewhere where I can see it so that we can give them the accolades and so that I can give you your homework badge because Casey has already made it. She was on it today and she already made it. Okay, for the second half of tonight's chat, we were... Oh, Sandra says they don't have the Bradford pears there, but the mulberries stink. Yeah. I don't know. They're beautiful, but my gosh, they smell bad. And they were such weak trees. They they will go over in a storm like nobody's business. Of course, they grow fast too. But okay, last week um, we were talking about red chocolate, and I opened a can of pumpkin. So if you all remember that, I opened a can of pumpkin. I did not choose one of my frozen things of pumpkin because um, I didn't have time to thaw it, and I still have some pumpkin left over. So I wanted to make something tonight that was going to use up the leftover pumpkin. So we're going to get this going real quick so that we can um, get these in the oven and try them before the end of the chat, and then we're going to talk about something in between. So tonight we're going to make, excuse me, tonight we're going to make pumpkin cornbread muffins. If you have not, if you've never had um, Jiffy cornbread uh, cornbread mix, and this is just, it's America's favorite. I know it's backwards, but we're on the iPhone, but America's favorite Jiffy corn muffin mix. We're going to use this and the pumpkin and a couple of other things to make some pumpkin cornbread muffins. I will say this before we get started. I'm going to keep saying that this makes nine regular size muffins, but you're going to see me put them in a mini muffin tin, mini muffin tins and that is so that we have a chance for these to be done um before the chat is over so y'all don't have to stay here until 9 30 waiting on these to be done so the first thing we're going to put in here is one entire package of jiffy cornmeal mix corn mix corn muffin mix so we're going to put in the um we're going to put in the entire package of that then to that we're going to add an egg So we're gonna add an egg to that. Then we are going to add a third of a cup of milk. And this is a third of a cup of not only skim milk, this is um, Fairlife fat-free milk. 
and that's how I'm going to keep the points a little bit lower in this one. So that's a third of a cup of I chose Fair Life Fat Free Milk. Then we're going to do a half of a cup of the pumpkin puree, and we're using up this pumpkin. So, ooh, yeah, Mary says she has these ingredients. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're going to do a half of a cup of pureed pumpkin. This is not pumpkin pie. Um, you know, so we're not making a pumpkin pie here. We're going to make um, pumpkin cornbread muffins. Ooh, what's a punnet basket? Caroline said something about a punnet basket, and I need to know what that is. So that's a half a cup, a half of a cup of the pureed pumpkin. Okay, we're going to get that in there. And then we're going to do um, two tablespoons of your favorite sugar substitute. And I'll just use um, a Trivia Baking Blend. So we're going to add two tablespoons of that. This is going to be a sweet and savory cornmeal muffin. And I am going to go ahead and put some a little bit of pumpkin pie spice in here. So I'm going to use pumpkin spice that I got from Dax. I'm going to put just a little bit in here. We're not trying to make a Thanksgiving Day um, concoction, but I do want it to have kind of a kind of a pumpkin-y um, Carolyn says, oh, probably basket in the U.S. What kind of a basket? What kind of a basket? Um, but anyway, I want it to be kind of a sweet, it's going to be a sweet and savory um, corn muffin. You know, corn muffin when we get done. You could probably do this with pureed butternut squash. Yes, Vicki, I do still use Truvia. Um, it has um, stevia in it. I don't sweeten a whole lot. Um, I'm not putting a lot of sweeteners in things. Um, so it's not like, like, see, I don't put any sweetener in my coffee. I just drink my coffee black. I don't put any sweetener in my tea. Um, so it's not like I'm not getting a ton of any, you know, any artificial sweeteners. If you want, if you don't mind the points, and if you, or if you want to use regular sugar, you absolutely can do um, regular sugar. And you just have to remember to count the points. And I've already preheated my oven to 400 degrees. I am going to spray my mini muffin pan. I am not sure yet how many mini muffins this is going to make. We will find that out. But if these were regularly sized muffins, it would be um, about nine. It would be nine regularly sized muffins. And I'm using a just a rounded bottom tablespoon um, tablespoon measuring spoon to spoon out into the mini muffin cups just to try and keep it a little bit neater. So again, if these were regular size, if these were regular sized muffin tin, this, if this was a regular size muffin tin, it would make nine of them. And we're going to find out how many minis. This one has one, two, three, this one has 12 spots. So I know for sure it's going to make at least 12 minis. And again, I'm only making the minis just so that we have some chance of trying them, you know, of you all seeing me try them before the chat is over without you hanging out until 9.30, 9.45, whatever. And Phyllis says, have you made these before? Do they have any pumpkin taste? They're going to have a tiny bit of a pumpkin taste because they have pumpkin pie spice. So when you say a pumpkin taste, do you mean like, is it going to taste like you just put, like took a bite of pumpkin? Um, hold on a second, I'm going to put these in the oven. Okay, and we are going to take those out and try them in about 10 minutes. So I need somebody to let me know when it has been 10 minutes. So according to my clock, it is 8.39 and 14 seconds. So at 8.49, and 14 seconds. I need somebody to go. It is that it has been 10 minutes, and then we're going to. And I forgot to grab my toothpick. Let me grab that real quick. So when it has been 10 minutes, we are going to get those out, and we're going to see if we stick a toothpick in them. If they come out clean, and if they come out clean, then they will be ready to try. Okay. 
So I know you all are thinking, why are you making pumpkin muffins? It's March. You clearly just said that it is March 5th, Kelly. Why are you making pumpkin muffins? Okay, first thing I need to tell you is this recipe, those are, it's five smart points for a regularly sized muffin, which is normal for a corn muffin. So a normal corn muffin is gonna be, ah, Dusty just realized we're talking. So a normal corn muffin is gonna be about five smart points. And if you go to Cracker Barrel, five smart points. If you make it at home, it's gonna be about five smart points, depending on you know what you put in it. Um, sometimes we put corn in ours. Sometimes we just make them um, you know, normally. Sometimes we don't put anything special in them. And um, this time they have pumpkin, you know, and a couple other things in them. And Dusty's like, what are y'all doing? Why are y'all talking without me? Um, oh, and Loretta says, I can eat pumpkin any season, yummy. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is not, for people who are just joining us, this is not a fall pumpkin recipe session. This is just part two of um, chat number three, um, 309. Um, we were talking about what happens to your body when you lose weight. Um, you're going to have to eat some other foods besides just I'm going to call them diet foods all the time. So five points for a corn muffin, I don't think is bad. I would spend five, I should say five dollars. I would spend five points on a corn muffin all day long and then eat a bunch of zero point things um, to go around, to go with that. So what am I doing with my muffins? I wanted, A, I wanted to use up the rest of the pumpkin puree. Um, B, I have soup to eat for the rest of this week. And I wanted to... Uh oh, we may have to stop and give Dusty some water. And I wanted to um, have just a little something, you know, just a little something extra to go with the soup. I don't know. Yep, we're going to have to give him some water real quick. Hold on just a second. We have so got to go back to having these at the, uh, in the new show room, or get to have these in the new show room so he won't keep it demanding. <clears throat> I do not have a chair. I do not have a chat quarantine chair. Yes, Karen. Well, I'm hoping I'm not losing it. Karen said, oh, no, you're losing your voice again? This is um, seriously from the Bradford Pears, and I started a little bit early on taking my Zyrtec, so hopefully we're not going to lose it. Oh, Caroline says she has a punnet, a punnet of pears. Oh, cool. Is that, so that's a basket, a punnet. That is awesome. I'm going to use that some, at some point this um, week. And yeah, so Phyllis, as long as you make it airtight, I have never had a problem with pumpkin in a can when it was um, air when it was when I kept it airtight. And this is just one of those little food huggers. Now, after, now after tonight, this has got to come out of the can. So I, it's been in there for one week, and that is long enough. But with with these, with something you know something airtight like that, I've never had any problem with that. What I would not do, so Loretta just had a great question that's going to, I mean, uh, that, sorry, Phyllis just had a great question that is going to sidetrack me for just a second. Um, I am sure that there are probably food safety people who would say, oh my gosh, you've got to get it out of there. What I would not do is to leave it with the lid on, okay, because the, the lid from the can. That's what I consider to be a no-no, and that's because the lid of the can, like the outside of the can, which the lid is part of the outside of the can, has so much bacteria and gross stuff and whatever because I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you all are not washing your cans before you open them. Am I correct? Am I correct in that assumption? Because I'm not, even though I wash bananas before I before I open them, um, I am not, what, and yes, Lord, I freeze my pumpkin all the time. I just didn't, I, did, I didn't have time to thaw it out last week. Um, but I'm not washing my cans, even though I wash my um, pumpkin. I mean pumpkins, even though I wash my bananas. But the lid, I would never, ever, never, and I don't even do it with Dusty's dog food. I don't do it with um, tuna that we feed him. I don't do it with any canned goods. I remove the lid. The lid goes away, and then I use a some kind of airtight, you know, some kind of airtight seal. So food huggers work well for that. Um, Casey got me a, well, oh, let me show it to you real quick. And I'm not trying to not talk about the muffins, but this is just another cute idea. So food huggers work. So the food huggers work. Casey got me these. Um, she got me a couple of these at Ikea. And these just stretch, you know, over the top of a bowl or a can or whatever. So again, remove that lid. Remove that lid, the top that's got all the yuck on it and then use something like this or something like a food hugger 
to make the top, you know, to make it airtight so that you're not getting stuff in there, but get rid of that lid. Okay, that was actually a great question, Phyllis. Okay, and we're gonna have to go do something with Dusty. Hold on just a second. I am so sorry. So, Dusty and his, I'm at home so I can do what I want to shenanigans, and John had to go to a job site in Sevierville, if y'all happen to know where Sevierville is, so he's not here to help me wrestling. But anyway, okay, so we were talking about food safety somehow in the middle of that, but thank you, Phyllis, for asking that question. But we were talking about soup. So, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about some of these soups from Aldi. And these are what I will be eating this week. Although, the first one that I'm going to be eating, I forgot to bring back with me from work to show you all. So, the first one that I'm going to be eating um, is, this is the em an empty jar of specially selected um, uh, gourmet soup, hearty vegetable. And this is from Aldi. I'm going to go back and buy like five more jars of this. Apparently, this is a seasonal item for Aldi. It is in a glass jar instead of in a can. Um, oh my gosh, I left the, so let's see, I got tomato bisque, and Casey and I each had a bowl of it, and then I left the third bowl at her house, so I don't have that jar to show you. The hearty vegetable, I opened it last week, and I ate it three nights in a row. So good. This was so good, and it was, um, let me think, how many points was it, because I took the lid off. I think it was five points for a cup, if I'm not mistaken, and somebody asked if it had dairy, it does not have any dairy so the ingredients with this one is or um with the hearty vegetable is water tomatoes tomato puree salt sugar onion carrots zucchini black beans spinach dehydrated potato and then it contains less than two percent of blah, blah 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 this was so stinking good so i'm making these pumpkin cornmeal muffins to go in my soup for the rest of this week but again the one that I'm going to eat this with first, I've forgotten left at work, and that is the, um, what is it called? It's like black bean tortilla. Actually, we're not using the iPad for anything. Hold on a second. Ooh, Caroline says food in an Irish Aldi's is probably different. Um, some of it, yes, but like, Caroline, these soups... These are German, so those are probably going to be the same. I don't know about the specially selected, but you should um, you should totally look and see if you can find that. Okay, so let me see if I can find this, what it is called. And it is from Aldi. Specially selected soup. Okay, so Aldi specially selected soup. What, Carolyn? Don't be sorry. Okay, and again, these are in the um, jars. And so the one that I'm going to be eating this week is it is called. And I hate that I forgot it at work. Okay, so they've got tomato bisque. We've already eaten that one was delicious. Southwest style tomato and black bean. Okay, so I'm making, oh, ding, ding, ding. Okay, Mary says ding, ding, ding. Let's get those out and check them. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much, Mary, for letting me know that it was time to get these out. Smelling good. Okay, let me try a toothpick in this and see how that's working. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, that is clean. So that was 10 minutes. If you were making these in a regular size muffin tin, so if you were doing the nine in a regular size muffin tin, ooh, look how pretty those look. It is, we're gonna let those cool while we chat for just a few more minutes. So in a regular muffin tin, in a regular size muffin tin, it's going to be 400 degrees for 16 to 18, um, thank you Caroline, but it's going to be 400 degrees 
for 16 to 18 minutes in a regular size muffin tin. And again, just check them with the toothpick. Just with the toothpick, just to see if they're done. And in the mini muffin um, pan, I don't know yet how many it's gonna make, because there's still a little bit left in here. And again, that one does 12. So I'll let you know when we post the recipe how many it makes in a mini muffin tin, but it looks like in the mini it is going to be, let me write that down real quick. I still did 400 degrees, but 10 minutes seems to have been perfect. Okay, so let's continue talking about soup for just a few minutes before I try one of those. So the specially selected soup, and if you don't have an Aldi near you, so sorry, you can find something else, you know, find your um, own choice of soups. So the Southwest style tomato and black bean, that's what I wanted to make those for because I don't know, Southwest, Southwest tomato and black bean just, I don't know why it just seemed like it should have a pumpkin cornmeal muffin crumbled up in it. Does that sound fantastic to you all? Because it sounds fantastic to me. These are so savory, but so sweet. I mean, you can even, you can even kind of, um, kick it up a notch and make them even more sweet. You can add some like um, roasted pecans, um, you can do some brown sugar too, you can make some kind of a little drizzle, you know, I mean, you can make them pretty sweet. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep them savory sweet, you know, so that they still have some, you know, some savory to them. And if you have like a ton of points left over, if you've got a ton of points for the day, you can totally do um, some honey butter. Like, I can't keep that at the house because I would just sit and eat honey butter on things all day long. But yeah, those with honey butter. And I'm thinking you can probably, I've not tried it yet with um, butternut squash, but I'm, I'm thinking like butternut squash, acorn squash, anything like that. I just happen to have an open can of, you know, pumpkin. But I'm thinking anything like that pureed um, would be fantastic in these cornmeal muffins. And this, this stuff, I don't know how much it is in your area, but this is like a dollar twenty nine or something here. Um... Oh yeah, Vicky, a cornbread salad would be good. Hmm. Yeah, but Jiffy cornmeal mix, this is like what all the old women around here use. I use this to make corn cornbread, corn muffins, whatever, and tonight we're using it to make um, pumpkin cornbread muffins. But this is like a dollar twenty nine for this little box, and I always buy two or three of them, um, you know, when I get them. But so stinking easy. Don't need anything extra. Don't need anything to make it rise. Don't need any of that stuff. It's already. For Cents. Phyllis got one for, she got some Jiffy Cornmeal Mix for 88 cents. That is a great deal. That is an awesome deal. Um, okay, so back on the soups. The, um, I had lots of questions about this one. This was delicious. I gave this a four out of five eggs um, on Instagram and on Facebook the other day. And the only reason that I did not get to give this five out of five eggs is because of the amount of sodium. So it does have, and this is again, this is the Aldi specially selected gourmet soup, hearty vegetable. Um, it lost one of its eggs because um, it only got four out of five instead of five out of five because it has 50, I think it's 50 or 56, I can't remember, percent of your um, of your daily, hold on, let me see. It was a lot. 41, sorry. It's 41%. It's 41% of your daily sodium allotment. That's a lot. That's a lot of sodium. So I could only give this four out of five eggs. Um, but again, somebody asked, I'm trying to think who it was. Was it one of the Marys? I think it might have been one of the Marys asked if this had dairy in it. It does not. It, this did not have dairy in it. Um, I'll have to look at the um, Southwest Southwest style tomato and black bean to see if it has any um, dairy in it. Ooh, yum! And Vicky is sharing the recipe. Hold on for the corn for the um, cornbread salad. Crumble cornbread and then layer peppers, eggs, tomatoes, olives, lettuce, and put dressing on top. Then toss it and also onions. Cornbread salad is so delicious, and I think I've already got, I think I have a cornbread salad recipe on, whoops, on ifyouhaveanegg.com. Let me see real quick. Y'all have done a great job of distracting me tonight. Fantastic job of sidetracking me tonight. But again, I'm making these to go in my soup. We'll try one in here in just a second. So I've got, at work, I've got some hearty pea soup also from Aldi. Um, and that's from the Dutch Kitchen because I cannot pronounce those two words. Um, I do not have any of the fall harvest vegetable soup at work, um, but I might be taking some of that. Let me see if I've got a cornbread salad. Let us see. 
and I've got the Southwestern um, bean is already there. Cannot wait to try that one. Oh yeah, okay. So this would be super good. Okay, we do on if you have an egg.com, if you search cornbread, we do have a country cornbread dressing salad. Um, and it looks fantastic. Well, I mean, I've, I eat it all the time, but it's fantastic. The, I had forgotten how pretty the pictures turned out. So if you get a chance to go um, and look for that, it's just on if you have an egg.com and it is a country cornbread salad. Um, but anyway, so I'll let you know how these taste with the soups. Um, I did give Casey the rest of my tomato bisque, so I will not be trying that. But let me go ahead and pop one of these out and try it for you here. I'll try one of the shorter ones. Come on, little baby, come out. Come out. Okay. So this is a pumpkin cornbread muffin, and look at how pretty the inside of that is. And again, if you were making um, if you were making regularly sized muffins, you would do nine muffins, 400 degrees for 16 to 18 minutes. Don't know yet how many mini muffins this is going to be. So the regular sized muffins, it's four smart points each. I'll figure out how many smart points it is if you do mini muffins. Once I figure out how many mini muffins it'll do, um, if you do the mini muffins, it's 400 degrees for 10 minutes. 10 minutes was perfect. That is perfect. So let's go ahead and try it. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> exactly as expected. <coughs> if I don't get choked on it. Delicious, delicious. The pumpkin gives the... <coughs> The pumpkin gives the savory of the cornbread just a hint of sweetness. It's going to go fantastically with these soups. Um, it also makes it super, super, super moist. I know you all can't tell from there, but look how moist that is. It is absolutely moist, absolutely delicious. Again, um, this, these are pumpkin cornbread muffins. <clears throat> if you are just joining us for some reason in the last three minutes, <clears throat> sorry for the voice again. Bradford pear season, um, and I really did start taking my Zyrtec and my Nasonex early to try and avoid this, but so sorry. So thank you all again for being here. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. Nine regularly sized muffins, five smart points each. Put them in for 400 on 400 degrees for 16 to 18 minutes. Don't know how many mini muffins. Um, don't know how many mini muffins, but those are going to be 400 degrees for 10 minutes. And again, hope you all enjoy them. Let me know what you think. If you do try this recipe, please comment in the recipe. So over on if you have an egg.com, nobody ever comments in, on the recipes, ever. I mean, y'all tell me stuff, you know, you'll say, like, oh my gosh, you know, like, um, oh, like one of the Marys, her favorite is the uh, fluffer nutters. And she, you know, comments all the time, but never on the recipe. Nobody ever does on the recipe. Anyway, if you're watching this later on YouTube, I'll just whine a little bit because I sound pitiful tonight. But if you were watching this later on YouTube, go ahead and let that next video roll over. I promise you will enjoy it. And then click that little subscribe button down there. And please, please, please click subscribe and please click that little bell so that you'll be notified the next video that comes out. But I hope you all will try these and I hope you will comment and let me know how you like them. Um, I'll let you know when I figure out how many mini muffins there are. And again, um, Casey will get this video posted on YouTube um, at some point tomorrow. And that's just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg. And then Jessica will post the printable recipe here in just a couple of days. So thank you all again. I enjoyed it again. And I'm going to go eat the rest of this my little mini muffin and figure out how many of these we can make. But y'all have a great evening. And I'll talk to you next time. Good night.